worse for it. Yeah, and what did that lead to? Then I started doing <coughs> sort of mad things. I got a bit more reckless. We ended up buying a shotgun and a Luger pistol. We ended up pleading guilty to armed robbery. Yeah. And ended up at the Old Bailey at the age of 15. Yeah. Now Dr Maiden's moved on to quizzing Noel about the victims of his violence. What, what happened? I felt a razor in my pocket, pulled it out, got up and slashed all three of them. Um, slashed across the face? Uh, two across the face, one down the back, one across the top of the head. Yeah. I mean, if, if, I, hadn't got, if I didn't have the razor and I hadn't been able to get off the floor, they would have stamped my head in. Right. They, would, they were out to do me properly. Yeah. You know, so I've got no, I've got no, um, no sympathy for him at all. Did you enjoy fighting? I did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I liked the good punch-up. Noel appears to have little empathy or concern for his victims. Dr Maiden now wants to probe Noel's need for control, another common psychopathic trait. Power. Yeah. To have power over people. I mean, when I take over a bank, and that's yeah. the way I think of it, I take over a bank, and all, whether it be for three minutes or five minutes, yeah. That's mine now. I control that, and I yeah. control everyone in it. Yeah. And I, I love that feeling of power. Yeah. I wonder about relationships. Just really casual stuff, you know. I yeah. was never out long enough to really have any sort of meaningful relationship. Mm. So when I was out, I was just like, you know, I'd be with about 10 or 15 girls, sometimes three or four at the same time. They didn't know about each other. Yeah. But I knew it's kind of like one of them things, you don't take no responsibility looking back on it now, because I know I'm going to be back in jail soon and let right. them sort it right. out, kind right. of thing, you know. Do you know how many partners you've had over the years? I don't know. No. No. I'd say about... about 40 or 50. Right. Yeah. After a two-hour interview, Dr. Maiden reviews Noel's criminal and psychological records. He tallies up Noel's psychopathic score on a scale from 0 to 40. A normal person will usually score between 0 and 4. More than 25, you're diagnosed a psychopath. Hi, Noel, come on. Can I take a seat, right? I just thought I'd... Uh... Feedback to you, you know, my, my initial thoughts. Um, I think you do uh, meet quite a lot of the uh, standards for a, for a diagnosis of psychopathy. I think I think you would have, you know, there's this this scale, this uh, psychopathy checklist, and I think you would have scored in the top quarter of that. So probably in the sort of low to low to mid thirties out of out of forty. Do you have any questions at all, or anything you'd like to? No, no, not really. I'm quite pleased with that. Okay. Oh, nice talking to you. Yeah. Noel takes heart from not having scored near the maximum 40. But his score is high. He is bordering on extreme. I think he'll struggle not to reoffend. He'll struggle to keep himself out of trouble. I think as a young man, he would have had a, an even higher score. And we know that he not only uh, struggled then, but he actually did offend on numerous occasions. So I think if we'd known... Noel, as a young man, he would have presented very differently from the rather affable uh, person he, he can present today. And even today, I think in the right circumstances, we'd see a rather different side of him. Now in his 50s, Noel is trying to steer clear of trouble, and he's begun to reflect on his life of crime. I never really looked at the human element of what I was doing. And the reason for that is, when you're doing that kind of work, you don't see the human element. You turn people into cardboard cutouts, caricatures. You don't see their faces. When you're on a robbery, there might be 20 people in a bank. I can't remember none of them when I come out of the bank because they don't matter. I've dehumanised them in order to do what I'm doing. Now, I never understood, like most armed robbers, that that is the damage you're doing. It's a psychological damage. People. Um, who are in the bank, who haven't been touched, who have nothing to do with it. They're, they're traumatised, a lot of them, you know, and I've never really understood that, and I always dehumanise my victims. Noel Smith is going to continue his journey of self-discovery. He believes he may have turned a corner by facing up to the impact of his crimes. Neither he nor Joanna Dennehy have ever tried to conceal their violent personalities. They were out there, loud and obvious. There is another type of psychopath, all the more dangerous because their disorder is hidden. It's invisible behind a mask of sanity. Meet John Canan, rapist and sexual predator. 
the prime suspect in one of Britain's most famous cold cases, the disappearance of Fulham estate agent Susie Lamplew. In 1987, newlywed 29-year-old Shirley Banks disappeared from Bristol city centre. It led to one of the largest missing person searches ever. A man had been seen watching Shirley Banks as she shopped for a new dress. He proved to be one of the world's secret psychopaths, able to look normal, even attractive. But beneath the facade, he was very dangerous. Police believe the driver's door of Shirley's Mini was broken, and as she climbed into the passenger side, the man suddenly pushed his way inside. He forced her to drive them both to his flat. Three weeks later, police arrested John Canaan for a different assault. They found Shirley's Mini in his garage. And when they checked Canaan's criminal record, they realized they had dragged a truly evil man out of the shadows. Back in March 1981, when he lived in the Midlands, the then 27-year-old Canaan had robbed a knitwear shop at Knife Point. He tied up the shop assistant's mother, then raped the shop assistant after threatening to stab her baby if she resisted. Canaan had spent five years in prison. When released, he moved to Bristol and with his superficially plausible manner got a job as a car salesman. Police later concluded that Canaan had held Shirley Banks overnight in his flat and the following morning forced her at knife point to call in sick at her workplace. They also believed that when Canaan tried to move her, that she made a break for freedom. A 65-year-old woman testified in court what she saw. At a red traffic light, we pulled up alongside the wooded copse when I heard someone saying, come on, come on. Then I heard the sound of something being punched. Then I saw the man punching and lying on something, punching to the left and the right, saying, I warned you, I warned you. Six months later, Shirley Banks' naked and decomposed body was found in the Quantock Hills at a site bizarrely called Dead Woman's Ditch. The investigation revealed the true nature of Canaan's severely disordered personality. He was charged with sexual attacks on two other women as well as the murder of Shirley Banks. John Canaan was jailed for life in April 1989. Canaan has very prominent psychopathic traits. The things he did to his victims uh, show that he had no empathy for them at all. He's never shown any remorse for his actions. Because of those psychopathic traits, he was a very dangerous man. Bristol, with its trendy bars and clubs, had been a perfect hunting ground for him. He was constantly on the lookout for women. His psychopathic violence was never far below the surface. Canaan would be charming and attractive until he didn't get his own way. Then he could turn in an instant. And he was a pathological liar, claiming to own a flash car and a flat. In reality, one was on HP, the other rented. He funded his expensive lifestyle by robbing shops. He was very successful at picking up women. He would use the flowers, the chocolates, and the champagne to manipulate his victims, to put them at ease, so that he could uh, exploit them. The word predator is probably overused, but it's entirely appropriate for a psychopath like Canaan. You add to that what some women have called his amazing eyes, and this is a very powerful and dangerous manipulator. Many women found that there was something mysterious and alluring about Canaan. They spoke of something that they really couldn't quite put their finger on. Unfortunately, probably what that was, was Canaan's psychopathy. After arresting Canaan for the murder of Shirley Banks, police discovered that just a few weeks earlier, Canaan had 